Hi. Um, Amazon apparently uh, now I put a block on my books. It um, made it so I can't get in to my Kindle account to uh, improve them or add new books. Uh, today I was going to add a new introduction to my last book uh, before they made it so I can't get on in. Um, I published over oh, oh actually I published uh, about 104 books and today I saw 103 books. Um, I didn't know that I had 103 books published. I didn't know, I especially didn't know I had 104 but come to think of it, oh, where are these books? I just, I thought of the one called, uh, that I did, that I can't, I can't see anymore, called uh, For the Must Needs Be Heresies Among You. And that's been gone for the longest time. But I didn't realize that other stuff was pulled off until I noticed that uh, I had 103 published books showing right in front of my face. Minus that uh, for there must be her heresies book, and anyway, because I spent so much time on this introduction to add to my latest book, apparently now the last book that will be on my Ramit Ramsey Kindle account, uh, Amazon Kindle account, I thought I'd read it onto video. The introduction to my book called. Uh, uh, called uh, Ramit Before Islam. Yeah, it shows me when I was nine. Yeah, except with something on my head. Introduction. This is a collection of writings by me, Ramit Ramsey, mostly at the age of nine, as part of a class project that lasted at most six months altogether. I didn't add the year, for it would help Muslims with clues as to who I am and in the process endanger my life or the life of my family, being that I have a tendency to expose Islam on the internet. If you are a bit of a Columbo, you, you should be able to uh, find out not only the year, but who I am. A warning to you. Uh, these are the ramblings of a child, so don't expect anything deep or heavy. What is presented is a simple-minded nine-year-old who was very much into nature and climbing trees. This is the stuff I'm reading right here. Yeah. Uh, what is presented is a simple-minded nine-year-old, uh, yeah, in trees, uh, who talked about his pet canary in the present tense, even though the bird died nearly a year earlier who also recorded dreams he had as if they happened yesterday, and those dreams don't make for good reading. The saving grace, though, is that they are short, yet present a psychological study of a kid who was not very good in school due to being a compulsive daydreamer who got bored easily. No, I wasn't dreaming of quantum mechanics I wasn't dreaming of quantum mechanical equations or a cure for cancer, but was dreaming about toys and things to make. Basically, what this book now is was little booklets of journals kept in a classroom where playing with clay was pretty much the number one thing to do. In that class, I got really good at making animal figures with the my hands and most of the animals were of gorillas that I'd give to my fellow classmates to destroy. It was very much, I, I was very much into King Kong at the time and it was common to find clay replicas of Kong squished between pages of books and melting on light bulbs. Uh, from the kids. Uh, it was the class that later helped me in my creation of a sculpture called The Barrier. I know, I know, I, I spelled it wrong, but if you spell it correctly, it's impossible to find it on YouTube. 
on my YouTube account as a, as a demonstrated here. And then I show the, yeah, here's the, yeah. By the way, uh, this, <laughs> this laptop, it's 10, it's going to be 10 years old in a few months, in a couple of months, actually. Yeah. I, I bought it when I was a trucker. I carried on, I took it on the road. It's been everywhere. Well, not everywhere, but you know, it's, it's gone all over America pretty much. Yeah. No, yeah. Okay. Well, almost all over America. Yeah. Cause I was a long distance trucker. As I transferred this from uh, handwriting to format for Amazon ebook publishing, it dawned on me that I mostly thought about peaceful stuff that took place at that school, not the violence that seemed common, uh, such as nearly being beaten to death by a kid who thought I deliberately bounced a ball on his balsa wood glider when his glider flew under the big rubber ball, it was a kickball. Uh, I was bouncing in a semi-comatose state of boredom. As the ball was coming down, it almost destroyed his glider, even though it wasn't, um, even though it wasn't harmed, it um, apparently gave him the excuse to have me eating and breathing in dust. That's what I remember most about that fight was uh, breathing in dust. Um, he tore into me like a rabid pit bull. Not long after that, he played Santa Claus in a class production of Twice the Night Before Christmas. Also absent from the, the writing was me ducking and dodging flying pieces of asphalt from my fellow friends and classmates that ended in hysterical laughter when I accidentally ran into a tetherball pole that rang loudly while I saw stars. That rang loudly while I saw stars. Yeah, I saw stars when I hit that thing. It went bong. Also absent from these stories, I, <laughs> uh, was my my uh, nearly being beaten to death by another kid when I said the paint on his face made him look like a made him look like a clown. He probably he he grabbed my foot, tossed me off the monkey bars, and man, those fists were fast and hard before he jumped on my neck and uh, started ramming my head into the school door. The last time I saw that kid was in the back of a police car. Um, how he got in the back of a cop car, I have no idea. He was very—he was a very good-looking, blonde-haired boy who reminded me of a real-life version of Hanna Barbera, Hanna Barbera character Johnny Quest. Even sounded like uh, uh, Johnny Quest. Uh, even sounded like him, but who had the same name as that of Captain America's alter ego. And boy, could he beat up a nature-loving boy like me at that time. After he attacked me, I noticed my first ever blood, blood blister uh, when he stepped on my hand. It was on my finger, though. It was like, yeah. Um, he, stepped, you know, he stepped on my finger. Uh, he stepped on my hand. I put finger here. If I ever heard of him again in my life, then it was his head and genitals found in a trunk within some 20 years later. Still, as I was saying, none of the violent stuff that happened to me at that school became recorded at, uh, in those stories, the stories that are in this book I published, the last book apparently that I'll ever publish on Amazon uh, with my pen name of Ramit Ramsey. I'm wondering if the teacher removed them or deliberately lost them to protest, uh, to, to protect the reputation of that school. I wonder. For one thing, I remember talking about my teddy bear. That got stuck in a pine tree, causing me to try to get it down by throwing rocks at it. 
when I said it hit, when I said I hit the hit uh, the rear, when I, when I hit it in the rear with one of the rocks to try to uh, knock it down, something that actually happened. My teacher told me to not say that. So, there is a possibility that my writings were greatly influenced, uh, edited and censored by that teacher, and stories of violence discouraged. Things weren't completely crazy. Um, uh, things weren't completely crazy at that school, though. At lunchtime, uh, the bus would take us to another school, where we could meet with kids who probably didn't have their brainwaves tested. In other words, normal kids. Yeah, they, they tested my brainwaves. Yeah, yeah. One time on that school bus, you'd think I would be small. A very mentally challenged girl was kissing me all over the face and crying if I held her back. I felt sorry for her, for she was not born that way, but was... Uh, made so when doctors cut too deep inside her head to cure her of seizures. The only thing she could say was, hey, and walk with a limp. The whole year she had a cast on her arm. You know, I think I'll quit it here. I'll begin part two later. Bye.